I'm Forrest Tanaka, and today I'm going to cover a really temporary situation, and that is the shutting down of Apple's Mobile Me service. Now, most of Mo Mobile Me transfers over to iCloud, like the synchronizing of contacts and things like that, but certain things aren't moving over, and probably the most important one is the iWeb service. That's going to be shuttered at the end of July, uh, or end of June 2012, so just a couple of weeks from now. And so I'm going to show you today how to handle this situation if you're using the iWeb service and hosting it on Apple's um, iDisk site. Uh, the first one we'll cover is just continuing with iWeb, but hosting it somewhere else. The second is uh, using a WordPress site, and the third is using a premium web hosting service. So let's get into it. Uh, let's show you the sample iWebsite that I showed, or that I created. Pretty simple one. Just has a home page, uh, about me page, and a photos page with, uh, some, with a slideshow and everything. Now let's visit the site. I've already published it. And of course it looks basically the same in a web browser. About me. And it has this uh, Google Maps widget. And it has a photos page with a slideshow feature. So this is all hosted on Apple's iDisk site. So now, how do we get it moved over? Let's take the first option. Continue with iWeb, but host it somewhere else. Now, you may be surprised you can do that, but the reason is uh, iWeb has an option of not hosting it on the uh, iDisk servers, but to host it to an FTP server. Now, where can you get an FTP server? Uh, I, I had hopes for things like Dropbox and Google Drive and uh, things like that, but none of them allow FTP, uh, which is kind of a shame. I can understand the reason why they don't. So it looks like we're really going to have to spend some money. Now that should be okay because we used to have to spend money on MobileMe anyway, $100 US per year. Most hosting services are about that price. So let's take a look at a couple. Now here's one. I have experience with all three of these. I can recommend all three. One is InMotion Hosting. Very nice support. AN Hosting. This is where I hosted my website for uh, the first uh, 18 months or so. And Green Geeks which is uh, where I currently host my website. Now, I'm not sponsored by any of these people. These are just ones that I've worked with that I liked. Now, to sign up, uh, you can probably, if you're using a, if you've been using a, a iDisk, probably the cheapest option works. Uh, and so let's take a look at uh, Green Geeks. And you just follow every, Every web host is different in how you sign up, but for the most part, like these three services, they make it very, very easy. And so just go for a basic uh, hosting service that allows FTP. Once you sign up for it, they should send you four things in an email. One is the name of the FTP host. Second is the path that your files have to go in. The third is your password and the fourth is your username. So once you have all four of those things, you're all set. So I'm going to pretend that I sign up for a web host because I actually did for my own website. And so let's see how we can configure iWeb to um, work with that. So all you have to do is go to your top level site. And this is where you configure certain things about the site as a whole. It says publish to mobile me. That's what's going to shut down on June 30th. So instead, choose FTP server. Let's give it a site name. We'll just keep it site. A contact email. I'll just use my business email. Now, remember those things I gave you. Server address. Now I'm going to copy it from my own host. So I'll paste that in here. A username. This is all what they sent me. Password, it's probably, and a path. Now your path probably won't look like this, but it very likely will include a public HTML, underscore HTML, very, very common. Now because that's where my whole website lives, I don't want my uh, iWebsite going there, so I just made a subdirectory. You don't do this part, I'm just doing it for demonstration. Protocol FTP, 
Now let's click test connection to make sure it works. It's logging into the FTP site, uploading a test file, and what do you know it works? Let's give it a website URL, which would be in my case, forest-tanaka.com slash iWeb. Okay, we'll leave it there. Now all of this turns red, meaning that it's not published, so let's publish the site. All right, we're just about done here. You can see that uh, little pie graph just has a sliver left. And it's done. So now let's visit the site. And there's our website, not hosted on iDisk. After June 30th, this will still continue to work. We can still use iWeb to modify the site and it'll still work. It'll still publish to your FTP site and it'll still be available on your uh, domain name that you uh, hopefully signed up for. Uh, I decided not to cover the domain name part because that gets a little complicated, but um, there are plenty of resources on the internet to help. And actually, one of the best resources will be your hosting service. Every hosting service I worked with had really good customer support, usually through uh, um, online chat or uh, phone. So they'll be able to help you. And so let's take a look at our site. Our homepage is intact about me. Let's take a look, make sure the Google Maps still works and it still works. And let's take a look at our photos. The most important part, thumbnails are still here. Let's play the slideshow. And the slideshow still works. So this is by far the easiest way to continue after uh, uh, June 30th and it will cost you about the same as uh, mobile me cost you. So now let's look at the next option. Now the next way to go beyond iWeb that I'll cover is WordPress. Now I'm not talking about WordPress.com which is a free blogging service uh, and that's really all it does and it's nice and easy to use and it's totally free but it's difficult to run a photography website based on a free blogging service. Now David Hobby runs the Strobus blog off of Blogspot which is a lot like WordPress.com but that's really a teaching site. Uh, it's not really his portfolio site. Uh, so <clears throat> a better way to do things is to use WordPress.org which is a support site for the WordPress CMS. This is the engine that drives WordPress.org, but it's a lot harder. Reason is, it's really the low-level engine, and you have to build a site around it. So, uh, as that implies, it makes it a lot more flexible than uh, using a free blogging service, a lot more flexible than using iWeb. You can build any website you want on WordPress. Every website I've designed lately for businesses are all WordPress based. And it's just a great way to do things. Now there's other CMSs like Joomla, there's also Drupal. Both of those are open source and free just like WordPress.org. Uh, but I've never been all that comfortable with those engines. I just right away I was comfortable with WordPress.org and it's been great for me. Now, you don't really have to build a website around it through coding. Uh, people have done the work for you using themes. Now there's a lot to cover here and I'm not going to cover very much of it here because I've already covered it in another four-part video series that you'll find in my uh, YouTube stream. And so if you're interested in this method, method I would go to that series. Um, but I did it real quickly just so you can see what you can do. And to do that I actually made a WordPress website. Now this bar at the top is just for the administrator. So, but uh, here's the home page. Again, WordPress is driving this. And this is a theme that I designed, just a simple demonstration theme. Uh, I don't know if I'd recommend using it for your website, but you could if you want. And uh, that's covered in the uh, series that I did. You can see there's a slideshow on the home page has all these menus and let's take a look at them. About me, <clears throat> shows a similar page. You can edit this in the back end and I'll show you that in a minute. And here's a photo library. You can see all these slides and a nice slideshow. All right, now what's driving this? 
Well there, this is your admin bar, which is only visible while you're logged in. It's not visible to your visitors. So let's go to the admin portion. Now this is still your website, but this is how you administrate the site. And let's take a look at About Me. Go to Pages, About Me, and that's what we saw. And you can edit it just like you can edit in Microsoft Word. Real easy. And so that's pretty much what I'll cover with WordPress. It's a great way to go, but don't think you'll have your website up overnight. And <clears throat> you may even want to uh, hire a WordPress developer to help you customize a site or even design a whole site for you. Or you can use an existing, existing theme uh, if you can find one that suits your needs uh, the way you want. Now the last uh, service that may take you forward beyond iWeb are what I call premium web services. These are kind of like CMS's like WordPress and some people actually call them CMS's. Um, but they're all hosted on that services servers and everything's handled by them. That means instead of paying a web hosting service, you actually pay these premium uh, website services. And probably the most uh, famous one example of this is Squarespace and it's um, it's actually a good one I've used it before uh, for a limited time and uh, it's very easy to use and you can set up a very nice looking site very quickly you can make a new website overnight with this uh, but it's a little bit what I might call pricey you know eight dollars a month that's not too bad and it probably gives you enough for your iWeb replacement. Uh, then it goes to 16 for more stuff. But uh, I did find it a little hard to use uh, to, um, to really customize it the way I really wanted it. So you really have to fit your needs into their themes. And if you can do that, I think this is actually a pretty good way to go. Let's look at some examples that they have here. And if you look along these categories, you can see photography and you can see existing photography websites that are based on Squarespace. Uh, let's open up on the other window or other screen. There we go. This is a, a WordPress, or sorry, not a WordPress, but a Squarespace based photography website. And you can see it's all quite nice. Again, you won't find this to be as flexible as a, a WordPress site, but it's certainly a lot easier as long as what you want fits in with what it's capable of. So those are the three services. One, the first one I covered is signing up for a web hosting service and configuring iWeb to work with it over FTP. The second, which is probably the hardest, is to make your own WordPress site. Uh, again, you need to purchase a, a web hosting service. Uh, but that is the most flexible. It's the one I love the most, but I live and breathe WordPress every day. And the third is using a premium web hosting service or a premium web service like Squarespace. Uh, that's sort of the middle ground as far as difficulty and flexibility. And it may, depending on which plan you choose, it may be the priciest or may not. So all three are worth looking at. Uh, in the short run, maybe if you're happy with iWeb, then the first method may be the best one for you. So I'm going to, for those who want to pursue the WordPress method, I'm going to have links to my four-part series on building your own WordPress photography site below. And uh, hopefully you'll easily uh, get beyond iWeb, no worse for wear. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.